as we are recording this, is almost Christmas time. So I'm in the giving mood. Who wants a new dress? Well, to all women watching this, I'm going to send you a new Versace dress. And for people wearing high glasses, I'm going to send you the newest pair of Tom Ford glasses. Retail price, $800. But let's think also about our health. So, who thinks that they might need any sort of medication between now and the day they die? Well, I got you covered also on that. But now that I'm saying it out loud, yeah, it doesn't sound like a great idea, actually. Let me think. So, for the dress, I'm going to take the average dress size for a woman. And that size is 16 for women in US and 44 in Europe. Yes, so I'm going to ship to you a 16 or a 44, depending where you are. And if that is your size, oh, you're super lucky. If you're above or below, yeah, I'm really sorry. But that's the only solution I've, I could found. For eyeglasses people, well, I know that you are getting more skeptical. So let's say that the average people are just slightly nearsighted. So I'm going to send you the Tom Ford glasses for nearsighted people. As soon as you wear them, if you see all clear, clear, oh, great. If not, maybe you can send it to a friend. So as you can see, averages do not work. And luckily, we can always go to a shop or we can go to a tailor if you want to be fancy and take the, the perfect dress for us. Or we can go to an optician and get the proper glasses. But what about the medication then? We all go to the doctor, we all get prescription, and it is all about us. How can I possibly trick you in finding an average prescription? Can I? Let's see. Let's say that I'm going to the doctor for a common disease. I'm taking a checkup and I get a prescription with some pills to take. The prescription say it all. It had my name on it, the doctor's name, the dose, the, the refilling, everything. So it was all about me. Well, I was wrong. Because while, while I was to the doctor's office, thinking about my own problem, well, the pills that I have to take are actually meant for this guy, a middle-aged white man. Because from the moment in which a drug is developed till it's tested, his genetic traits are taken way more into account than mine. And this does not happen only for me. It happens also if he goes to the doctor, middle-aged white man. Even if she goes to the doctor, always the same guy. And even sometimes for them, middle-aged white men. So to all middle-aged white men watching this, we don't want to blame you. We just want to acknowledge the fact that the biggest part of the world population does not fall in that average. I strongly believe that medicine should be all about inclusion and precision not averages. We are all different by sex, age, lifestyle, genetic background, ethnicity, and all these factors make us unique. Those factors are also reflected into our cells, from our hair, our heart, even our skin. So are, are those factors taken into account when developing drugs? Not really, because things like this happen. An example, when taking the pills that the doctor prescribed me, me and all the women have almost the double, and I'm saying almost the double of the risk to develop an adverse drug reaction compared to men. And if you're lucky, it can be a rash. But if not, it can be also a drug-induced liver toxicity. And let's think about non-white people. Well, a recent report showed 
that among the drugs approved between 2018 and 2013, one over five of those drugs actually change response depending on your ethnicity. We need inclusion and precision, not averages. And this happens because women and non-white people are not represented enough in clinical trials. In the early 60s, there was a clinical trial to check if estrogen supplements would help in preventing heart disease. Well, those supplements have been widely prescribed to women in postmenopause. The trial was run on 8,341 men and zero women. So you can imagine that from 0%, we can just improve. So actually, today, women enrolled in cardiovascular trials uh, went from 0% to 38% in 2019. So definitely, it's a good step, but we need inclusion and precision, not averages. Can we say the same for non-white people? Well, there the situation is worse. A recent Nature publication show the ethnicity of the participants in clinical trials between 1997 and 2014. Well, you can see from the graph, the majority is all white. And it's even more astonishing if we compare with the US population in those years. 40% was non-white. And that percentage is gonna increase and it will reach in 2045 the 50%. So more and more people will get drugs that are not tested on them. So here it is. We need inclusion and precision, not averages. And why I keep on saying inclusion and precision? Because right now we have a bad average. Inclusion can bring us to more accurate medicine, a more inclusive average, but it's always an average. And that's totally fine and we should strive for it if it's a common drug, if it's a, a common issue. But what about something more serious? So I want to ask to all the listeners who knows someone that had a heart disease or who knows someone who is going right now through cancer? Well, I think that those people don't want any average treatment. Those people deserve a precise treatment. And that's what I want to solve. So I'm a microelectronic engineer. And with two friends, we develop a tool that can help in developing inclusive and precise drug for all. And it is a computer chip, like the one that you have in your smartphone. In this chip, biologists can insert human cells and I'm underlining human cells because it can be of a man, of a woman, of a different ethnicity. So it includes us all. I will show you how it works. So if you take the chip and you cut it in half, you see two compartments. In those two compartments, biologists will include human cells. Let's say that an example in this case, we want to create a heart. So. The biologists insert the cells and the chip will nourish those cells through an artificial blood vessel. And as in your body, your heart is beating, the chip will, be, will beat like an R2 in such a way that the, the cells will feel like in your body. And last but not the least, we can monitor them. We can include electrodes and sensors to get data out of them. So it's like going to the doctor and getting a checkup to your heart. So we call it the beauty of microelectronics. This technology can be actually mass produced and it can be made accessible for all. And I want to show you that it's not science fiction. So here it is. Here you have a happily beating heart in our chip that is nourished through an artificial blood vessel. This work has been done thanks to the Leiden University Medical Center. Those cells are coming from a patient that chooses to donate those cells. And this is about inclusion. But we want to push the boundary even further. We want precision. 
So let's go back to the cancer patient. Every cancer patient journey always starts by taking a sample of the cancer. It's called biopsy. That biopsy is analyzed by the clinicians and a, a range of treatment is chosen. But it's a range. It's a matter of trial and error. So now let's imagine to take a slice of that biopsy, put it in, on the chip, and the chip will nourish and keep it alive for long enough to allow biologists to test the precise medicine for that patient, the precise treatment. Well, that's what we want to achieve with the Erasmus Medical Center. It will take a year, but up to now, we are able to keep alive that cancer tissue for two weeks. So I hope in a future in which individualized and personalized treatment will be available for all. And so the next time that you will go to the doctor, you will get your prescription. It will be all about you and not only this guy. <laughs>